Um, Aisha and uh, Marcy are going to be talking to us about how to connect a CMS and shopping cart to your Gatsby site. So Aisha, take it away. Hang on just a second, Aisha. It looks like you are muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, now, oh wait, send to live. Okay, so hopefully now you should be audible. Okay. Um, hey, Hashim or Josh, anybody wanna tell me whether or not you can hear me? Yep, Hashim says good. Sweet, Thank you. fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so welcome again. Thanks for coming. Uh, I'm really excited to talk to you all about how to add a shopping cart, get your e-commerce uh, site rolling with Gatsby. Uh, and I wanted to bring us back really quick to our learning team's mission. And that is to improve the learning experience for users of all skill and experience levels. And I wanna focus on that all part for today. We wanna to try and make this as accessible, as approachable as we can. And uh, for this, I wanna focus on how Gatsby can be a really awesome choice if you are wanting to build out your online store. It can be a really low cost, really lightweight option depending on the inputs that you choose. So the purpose of this session really uh, is that I want to give people those tools. I want to give people some options for adapting their business uh, because I know right now things are things are weird and hard and we want to make uh, as many we want to get as many folks the tools that they need and can use consistently to really kind of keep their businesses going as our whole reality changes. Uh, so uh, we're going to try and kind of break that down today. And uh, please, while we're while I'm going through this, uh, go ahead and ask questions. Marcy is also in the chat and she's going to be answering and providing resources as we go along, but I'm also happy to take questions as I'm talking. Thanks, Marcy. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome, glad to hear it screaming pixels. <laughs> All right, so I'm really trying to focus this talk on small business owners as well as developers today. So if you, whether you're selling physical or digital goods, digital is probably going to be a little easier depending on where you are and kind of how things go, uh, services, uh, all of that. We want to give you the tools to really expand your company and your brand's reach. And this is also one way that you can uh, give your existing customers the opportunity to buy from you remotely. Uh, so we are going to kind of get you set up to connect with those existing customers that you already have, as well as potentially reach new ones. Uh, the tools we're going to use today, we're going to use Gatsby, of course. Uh, we're also going to use a tool called Dato CMS. Uh, CMS is short for Content Management System. Uh, and so that is going to be how you manage your content. And that in our case is going to be, uh, in that case is gonna be products, but you could also use it for pretty much anything. You have a ton of control when you are using something like Dato CMS. Uh, so you could use that for content for pages. So you could use that as your uh, content management system for um, things like your about page. Uh, you can include profiles for all of your employees on your site if that's uh, something that you want to share with your potential audience. Uh, so uh, all of that 
is in your hands when you're using something like Data CMS. You can really control your data. Uh, and we're also going to be using Snipcart. And that is a very kind of lightweight option to add a shopping cart to your static site really quickly. Uh, so once, uh, once we do all of that, once we do the kind of setup that we're talking through today, you are going to have the option to make updates to your site without really touching code. If you want to then you know, further customize, then you can absolutely do that as well. All right, so let's swap on over. We're gonna exit out of here uh, and take a look at what our site is gonna end up looking like. So this is actually coming from a starter. Uh, and so a, an existing Gatsby site uh, that we can copy and use for uh, our own projects. And I'm able to add earrings or you know rings, whatever I'd like, cart, and I can walk all the way through this process. So I can actually, um, I can actually make uh, a purchase from my website. It's pretty bare bones. Uh, but I can, uh, I can do everything that I really need to do. Uh, this is just an example, um, but you can follow the steps that we'll walk through today uh, and then kind of further customize to fit you and your brand. Awesome. All right. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a quick pause to see uh, if we've got any questions moving forward. Anything, uh, if I say anything that uh, doesn't, that doesn't make sense, maybe I, maybe I forget to explain an acronym, anything like that, please pop that into the chat and Marcy will probably than I can, but uh, I also wanna make sure that uh, I'm covering those things as well. Right. Yeah, and I can float up questions to you in the breaks. One thing I wanted to point out is that, isn't this your jewelry line, Aisha? <laughs> that is correct. Yes, the, this is a selection from uh, some of my own jewelry that I've made for folks. Uh, and I am actually in the process of figuring out how I am going to port my own <laughs> my own jewelry store over to Gatsby. I had I had plans, and actually walk, walking through these uh, walking through this example kind of changed my mind. I'm actually now on board with Snipcart and um, and Dato. Uh, so yes, Snipcart does handle checkout. We'll talk about some of their features as well. Uh, it is. Uh, it's it's pretty nice. I I was surprised, honestly. Uh, we'll we'll take a look through my Snipcart dashboard and we'll see how that works too. And we also had a question from New York Dame, or I assume NY is New York. Um, which payment gateways does Snipcart work with? And maybe you'll get to that later. Yeah. Yeah. So I have. Uh, so Dato is going to hook up to a Stripe account. So you will also need a Stripe account to, uh, to use your live API keys for, uh, for Snipcart. And that API key is gonna be what connects your website uh, to, your, uh, to your Snipcart account. Um, so that's going to be this kind of, uh, well, this will be a public piece of information that uh, is going to say, hey, yes, this is this is allowed. This is uh, the can this is the uh, right account to send this money to. Uh, but we'll walk through that too. Sure. Um, so talking about uh, why why you might choose something like this over Shopify. Uh, Shopify is a fantastic tool. They have that it is purpose built to support e-commerce and so Shopify is going to have basically everything that you need to sell online um, with that kind of 
robust service. Uh, that means that you might uh, you might have a little more than you need to work with. I know I personally um, have been paying for a Shopify account for a while, and I really I really love the sort of user friendliness of it, but I don't really need a lot of their features. And so uh, the pricing on Snipcart uh, is a really fits my needs better. So I'm going to I'm going to move it along but definitely keep the questions coming definitely um stop me if or Marcy stop me if uh I need to go back over something but uh yeah let's let's get it going. If you're familiar with Gatsby um you may also be familiar with Gatsby Cloud. Uh, so Gatsby Cloud uh, is going to uh, is going to really make using Gatsby a lot more accessible for a lot of people. Um, we are able through Gatsby Cloud, which is our um, which is our product, um, to create a new site connect it up to data CMS uh, and um, also get a new site uh, hosted, get the code for that site hosted on GitHub all without touching any code. Uh, so that's, that's really exciting. I am going to go ahead and create a new site. And so of course, I am a Gatsby employee. I already have a Gatsby Cloud account. Um, but you can get started with that Gatsby Cloud account for free uh, and come over here to create a new site. Uh, so since I don't have a Gatsby site yet, I'm starting entirely from scratch. I'm going to come over here and hit, I don't have a Gatsby site yet, and then hit Next. Uh, so we have a number of starters here that you can choose from. And those are going to give you the use of a starter, which, like I said, uh, is a Gatsby, a working Gatsby site that you can copy and then work from. So if I come over here and choose Snipcart with Dato CMS, and then next again, I'm now being asked to configure a new repository. So a repository is going to be my project. That's going to uh, that's going to be my code that is associated with this site. Uh, and I'm I want to call this uh, Zuri test. Zuri Jewelry is the name of my jewelry business, and so I'm going to I'm going to use that. I'm going to roll with that. Now I'm choosing a destination here. So this is the account that the code uh, or the repository is going to be associated with on GitHub, which is our uh, code hosting service that we're gonna use. So uh, I'm going to choose my personal GitHub account. Um, if you are doing this for the first time and maybe don't use GitHub a whole lot, uh, you'll probably only have that option. And then I'm going to hit next again. <laughs> All right, cool. So once that's done, I'm going to connect my code, my site, up to my CMS provider. And since we've already decided this is the starter we're going to use, it is already made and ready to go to connect with Dato CMS and Snipcart, we're gonna, we're gonna choose Dato CMS. We don't really have much of a choice there. So I can authorize with Dato CMS. And again, since I'm already signed in, um, this is, and this is free to start as well, uh, I'm gonna be able to just hit the button and continue on. All right, cool. So I have a project name, Zuri Test, uh, and that is now going to be available under projects, maybe in a minute. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and start my site. OK, there we go. 
We're starting our project. All right. Cool. So now we have set up Gatsby, our Gatsby provisioned Snipcart site. So we've got everything, um, we've got everything set up and ready to go for us. We have, we do now have a data CMS project called Zuri Test, uh, and that should be available now. If I refresh again, there it is. We have our Zuri Test project, uh, and we've also got a repository on GitHub. So now if I, I'm gonna close this out. So now if I come over here, I have a repository hosted on GitHub that houses all the code for my project called Zuri Test. And I can clone this. Uh, so I can copy that code to my, to my computer so that I can work on it. Uh, by grabbing that URL. So I'm gonna open up my terminal uh, since I'm on a Mac and I am going to go ahead and clone that to, I'm, I'm just gonna put that on my desktop. So I'm gonna change directories into my desktop. That's probably a little small. Let's bump that up a bit. All right, y'all let me know if anything is too small as well. And then I am going to uh, git clone, which is that copy command. So now this code that we've got over here in GitHub is going to get copied onto my desktop. Awesome. And so now if I open this in my text editor of choice, which is VS Code, uh, I can uh, start to and start to play with that code. So I'm using this Gatsby teach command because it's going to open up uh, VS Code with uh, my fancy Gatsby profile. Um, oh, which I promise worked like an hour ago, but instead <laughs> we're gonna just do Zuri test, uh, code Zuri test to do the same thing. VS Code's not my friend today, I guess. All right. Uh, so that should work now. Cool. So now we can kind of look through, look through the code, explore a little bit. Uh, we've got a handful of uh, changes that we might want to make in here. Now. Uh, <laughs> should I, if I pull out of the blue, it's probably because I'm looking at the, at the chat right now. Uh, specifically, that was uh, Marcy's ha ha jinx. Uh, so uh, keep in mind that whether or not you are familiar with the code, um, you can also make some, some of these changes in GitHub itself. Uh, so for example, I close this out. We're gonna get there, I promise. Um, we're just gonna quit. There we go. Uh, so for example, if I come in here, uh, I can make changes in GitHub as well. Uh, so I'm gonna close out my sample project here and I'm actually going to see my built site through Gatsby Cloud. So while I was fiddling around with things, Gatsby uh, had already built my site for me. And so I can preview that site by clicking on, on this link here. So now I have this lovely uh, page Oh, did we lose Aisha? I think sock page strikes again. Yeah, sock page. <laughs> sock page. 
Uh, well, we did get a question about a Gatsby profile for VS Code, uh, which we're working on on the learning team to have, because um, we love VS Code. It's a text editor that you can use to edit code. So it'd be cool for all of us to have a Gatsby profile. So I dropped the link in the chat. It is it is a bit of a work in progress, I will admit. Um, but our goal is to have something that is accessible with good color contrast, that we can all have a similar uh, look and feel when we're hacking on code in, in Visual Studio Code. Um, are there any other text editors that people like to use? Uh, if you could chime in in the chat, we could have a little foray into text editors while Aisha comes back online. As you can imagine, a lot of us being on, on the internet at the same time, sort of this week of all weeks, we sort of anticipated that we might have some <laughs> connectivity issues. So bear with us there. Uh, we got some good comments in the chat. Uh, looks like people like WebStorm and Vim, sarcastic Vim. Hey, Vim can be really handy sometimes when you're on the command line. You know, we've been talking about how the terminal makes us feel like hackers and even knowing how to exit Vim, I think, can make you feel like a hacker. It is escape colon right quit or colon quit for those of you that don't know how to exit Vim. <laughs> kind of an ongoing joke. Um, I've used Sublime Text in the past and Atom. Um, it's nice to have multiple tools, but VS Code seems to have taken all of us by storm. Get some video links getting dropped in here. Is that a clip from the Hackers movie? No, it's uh, the Julia Stiles and Ghostwriter uh, explaining what it is to be a hacker uh, to another like twelve-year-old girl. It's a uh, favorite. Oh my gosh! I think I, I Julia Stiles. Yeah, I saw that clip recently, and a bit bit of a fun fact is that maybe not so much now, but she was my doppelganger in years I, past. <laughs> I see a similarity. Yep. <laughs> We also got some good comments about exiting the uh, trying to get out of Vim. How people will just close the terminal. Yeah, I've definitely I've done that. Um, people do use Atom. Yeah, I got some good stuff. So if we don't get Aisha come coming back, um, I do have her uh, test site that we can play around with. Um, I don't have her expertise in jewelry making, however. So I am hoping that her signal can come back. Um, but yeah, I've been hearing lots of people going online, lots of streaming, uh, maybe a chance that we're going to break the internet with all of our streaming. So it's a bit of an experiment this week with everybody being online. Ashim says he, he can see the Julia Stiles doppelganger reference. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, and another comment in the chat about Contentful using uh, REST for querying data where data uses GraphQL. So just those methods of requesting data, um, you know, what APIs do different platforms use and data apparently uses GraphQL. I haven't used it personally, but um, in seeing how Aisha is working with it in this starter on Gatsby Cloud, it seems pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, hoping that we get her back on. Oh, here she comes. Hey. Hello. Hello. Oh, I'm we were so just, sorry, y'all. <laughs> it's okay. I was just explaining that we sort of anticipated that with everybody going online this week. And so we were talking about text editors and clips, good hacker clips from videos and good stuff. Oh, yeah. I saw it. It looked like, like a great conversation. I've got, I'm like creeping <laughs> on y'all with my other computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we'll try this again. Uh, so where were we? Where were we? I think we were over here. So, uh, yeah, as soon as you get the screen share, uh, oh. I'm not seeing that yet. There we go. Yeah, yeah maybe we share. can. We should skip skip the. Oh, uh, was it the sock images that, or were just socks in general on the trying to figure out where we crashed? Your, I don't think your so. Well, right. we've got the shop. Yeah, we uh, go. I think that might have been a combination of things. Yeah, we have a shop. <laughs> it's working. It's it's. Hi, this cool, great. Let's. And this is the shop that gets auto auto provision. Uh, long, like I said. So this is my this is my site. It is 
it's live thanks to Gatsby Cloud. It is available for me to preview. I can share that link uh, around to other people. Let's say, you know, I'm working on this with my friend Marcy and, you know, maybe she's making some assets for my fancy jewelry shop. Uh, I can send her that and say, hey, uh, look, this is this is what I've got so far. Uh, I can add her to my uh, to my organization in Gatsby Cloud if I want to. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Cool. Uh, so let's actually take a look at the code itself. Um, if I, for example, were to make a change in here in in GitHub, uh, I can I can do that. I will usually not little where cloning things down uh, using the command line that sort of thing uh, you can also edit files right in uh, right in Gatsby or right in github if you're feeling if you're feeling adventurous so if I make that change uh, if I say let's uh, we'll say euro to dollar change euro to dollar and commit that change. Once that uh, once that goes through, once that is committed uh, or saved, you can think of that like a snapshot uh, in your in the history of your code. I think of it like um, a save file in a video game. That is a point that I can go back to in the future. <coughs> so if I come back over to Gatsby Cloud, notice that that has triggered another build. Um, so it is rebuilding my site. Uh, and it's going to be available to me live again at a different uh, URL, slightly different URL. Um, so that's going to take a few seconds more probably. Uh, and then I'll be able to see that change um, in my new build. This is actually uh, probably on the longer end uh, for uh, builds like this, you might uh, want to take a look at the starter at some point. But um. And there are changes coming that might speed things up. I won't spoil it, but <laughs> things are always improving and, yeah, always striving to make things faster. Faster, faster, that, faster. <laughs> that is true, for sure. So we can come in here, we can look at detail of the build. We can see our changes. So now I've got my dollar sign. I'm I'm selling stuff in the in the US. Uh, and that all is still looking good. Everything's still working. It is oh. Oop, got a little choppy internet again, I think. Yeah. Well, we got a question in the chat about an example of Gatsby working with a Shopify cart. Um, and the Gatsby Swag Store is an example. Um, and I'm dropping a blog post link in the chat. Gatsby Swag Store. Because um, the cool thing is that you can choose what e-commerce platforms work for you. I think Snipcart, as Aisha was saying, she chose it because it was a a little smaller, um, maybe not as feature rich as Shopify, but the pricing model was a better fit for her amount of sales. Um, and so, yeah, you can kind of choose, but that uh, swag store example should be interesting. And we recently added the guide, which I know Aisha was gonna share a session, but I will go pull that up now. Let me see. It's pretty cool that you can auto provision stuff from Gatsby Cloud because um, it just simplifies getting something up and running. And then when you customize it, um, the things that she would need to customize, um, I guess we'll see when she comes back. But that is the that's the direction to go next. And Mercy, do you are you able to um, you know basically do the screen share of what Aisha was going to do? I'm thinking maybe if you can do that and she can kind of walk you through it, maybe that'll be a little kinder to her internet connection. 
Sure. Yeah. Maybe if somebody else can go find the Shopify guide, that would allow me to get sure, going. Yeah, I can do that right now. So I'm going to um, quickly try and get as set up as she was. Um, let me see. Gatsby Cloud. I already have an account like she did. Um, as we mentioned, Gatsby Cloud is free for personal projects. So that's pretty awesome. So I don't have a Gatsby site yet. I'm going through the same steps that Aisha did before. I'm going to pick this Snipcart one and get going. I guess I could share my screen too. Um, let me see. There is a Shopify starter that someone shared. That's pretty cool. Um, let's see. I hit share screen. Are you seeing anything yet? Oh, there um, goes. Not yet. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to say... Yeah, and it's going to um, take me just a second to get it fit and then to send that change live. Oh, I might have a permissions thing on mine. So I have been using Gatsby Cloud for a while, so I might be in like a weird edge case um, being like an internal tester user. Um, so let me see. I have to go update permissions, I guess. So I'm actually going to not to screen share for a second while I try and get this <laughs> set up. <laughs> a little presenter secrecy over here. Um, right, let me I see. I put the right Shopify guide in there. Yeah, we just added it. I, I know um, there's always things to add, including using the Shopify buy package, which is really cool. Um, so let's see, get these permissions all accepted. Oh yeah, it's... Okay. Hello, I was about to pick up from where you left off. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's gonna take me just a second to get everybody back in place. Fun video editing time. Okay, I think I am good. You want me to pick up from where you left off? No, no, no. no. So I'm creating the repository. Um, go. And Marcy, are you sharing your screen right now? I can. I'm sort of going back through the steps. Okay. Well, yeah, I just um, want to make we sure already... we're showing whatever we need to be showing. Um, and it's going to take me just another second to kind of get um, set up here. Signing up with Dato. You know, it's kind of funny that um, you get to see us do this sort of stuff because, um, <laughs> I mean, this is how real life goes. So it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. Let me see. Uh, it's definitely a learning experience. How am I going to see my email? Um, okay. I don't really want to type a password in here. Let's... At least they use a password field, so it doesn't <laughs> show you what I just typed in. <laughs> All right, and yeah, there's we're... some of those fields that show everything. Yeah, setting up Dato. So All I mean, right. this is pretty going pretty smoothly. So Aisha, I was saying that because I have been testing Gatsby Cloud since it. It previously existed, I had to go and do some extra settings that um, some people might not need to do. No, I oh. already did that. Um, let me see. Why? Oh, this guy. So this should be connected. I authorized it. It wanted me to log in. It is connected. Yay. Okay. All right. We did it. Mm-hmm. All right. That's looking good. So, yep, should be starting this up any second. Um, and then I will quickly go through these. If you have to do it more than once, you get to get really good at it. <laughs> okay, so I've got this test site. I've got it on GitHub as well. That's pretty slick that it pushed all this code up. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to clone this as well. Open my terminal. So I will make this a little bigger. I'm gonna do get clone. 
I don't know. Mac keyboards, they just kill anyone else? <laughs> Let me see, why won't you paste? There must not be anything in my clipboard. I've heard about the dust in the keyboard problems with Max, and I think yeah. that might be happening to mine since I posted all those photos from being out in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did have a lot of uh, a lot of dust. So I'm going to run npm install. Um, since I haven't run this locally on my machine before, I need to make sure that any dependencies that Gatsby needs to get up and running so that I can run the site. Um, so yeah, Aisha, maybe you could talk me through what what I need to do next. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we saw the um, really strong uh, design that we've got. Uh, and so we're gonna use this as an opportunity to take a look at the code and kind of play around, see how you might brand that site for yourself. All right. Yeah, it's got some kind of colorful choices there that, you know, might not fit every <laughs> brand or every product. Um, for sure. So yeah, going back to this Gatsby Cloud. So it, it provisioned this automatically. We're uh, going through this more than once. So you're going to need an extra look at it. Um, but things I would probably change, I mean, thinking back to your Zuri site, Aisha, you didn't have the gradient background. Um, I think the, right. the header has some interactivity that maybe won't fit every brand. Um, yeah. Let me see, I've got uh, this Dato um, dashboard that I could go log into. So mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Log into this. Looking good. That's so cool that I didn't have to manually go and create, an, like I did create an account, but it set this all up for me, which is pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and if you look at that, your projects, yeah. And Aha. then click into test site. Uh, now you are, uh, you've got all of this set up for you. Uh, and if you scroll up to the top and enter the project, uh, now you're in uh, sort of a different view that is gonna be specific to that project. You'll be able to, update the data and all of that. So uh, now if you look over at products, those are actually already set up for you as well. So uh, we're gonna, uh, you're gonna be able to replace those. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete one. <laughs> the <laughs> one with the name that makes me cringe. I think I'm gonna start by deleting that. How do I delete these actually? Uh, so if way. you click in, yep. And then on the top right, there's an arrow icon. Aha. Uh -huh. And if you scroll, yep. I'm gonna don't even delete need to scroll. this record. <laughs> you can delete <laughs> uh, whatever you wanna delete. Yeah, so I think I remember you saying that um, because there's not that many products in here that it probably makes sense to just delete them manually as opposed to running some kind of a script. Is that right? Yeah, that's uh, that's the route that I went. You can absolutely uh, interact with Data CMS's REST API, uh, which is going to allow you to create, update, delete um, all of your Data CMS data uh, using JavaScript. Um, but in this case, since we are, we don't have a whole lot of items, and uh, we're we can we can move pretty quickly through this. Uh, it's probably faster to do this manually. Yeah, I, I might leave these here, and we could just customize what's there yeah, um, sure. to show, so we can maximize the time of looking at code and seeing how the connections work and that kind of thing. Um, since I don't have all of your beautiful jewelry images on my computer, um, if you have your own shop, you would likely have some photographs, um, some sort of copy or text that you would want to put in for each product. So you could go in and either just change these existing product listings to match your own products, or you could go in and create your own. It's kind of up to you how you would want to go through that workflow. Yeah, so I'm and if go... you... oh, yeah, go let's uh, head over to the code. It's looking so this... like we're about, we're about there. Yeah, so my terminal is all good. I'm gonna go to my finder. And so I installed, or I cloned that repository on my computer and I called it test shop. 
So I'm going to drag that onto my doc on my Mac to open it. So I've got VS Code here. Um, and yeah, where should I go first, Aisha? Yeah, so let's uh, quickly take a look at some of those styles. So if you go into your source directory or folder, yep. uh, you are going to uh, look at pages. And we're going to look at the index page. So this is sort of the entry point for the website. If my computer will Ooh. unfreeze. We're, on, we're really on a roll today. <laughs> this is just like the, 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 we did it. the, uh, the this, this is fine emoji has been shared in our company Slack a lot this week. I feel like this is another one of those. <laughs> yep. So Damon's, uh, so all of the product information is actually coming from Dato CMS. So the socks that we saw uh, just now, uh, those are the products that we're going to see on the page. And each time we make a change either to the data in Data CMS or to the code uh, and uh, push that to our remote repository, which is hosted on GitHub, anytime either of those two things happen, uh, Gatsby is then going to automatically rebuild our site uh, and give us a new preview that we can, that we can see live. Cool. So some things I can see right off the bat. Um, so this index file, this is a, a JavaScript component that will automatically create your site's homepage. So index is a homepage. Gatsby will automatically create pages from components in this pages directory. So index is pulling in product listings using GraphQL. So that's these this query language right here. Um, it is pulling products from Dato CMS. And these um, these keys here, so like all Dato CMS product, that is a, so there's a, what we call a schema. So these aren't things that you would just make up. They are data points that you would use to pull in data using GraphQL into your Gatsby site. And there's different properties that we can kind of pluck off of this, um, this schema, including things like a, an ID, a name, a price, if there's an image associated with it, you can not only pull in that data using GraphQL, but you can transform it. So I could change the image size. I could make images grayscale if I wanted to. It's a really powerful transformation and data layer. And then down here in the bottom part of the component is the area that we render using that data that we've pulled in. And this is using JSX. So JSX is like HTML, but it's written with JavaScript. So it gives us superpowers. So for every product that I've pulled in from Dato CMS, I can iterate over it and I can put in uh, code that will repeat for each product. Um, so there's an image that gets pulled in. I think we could do some accessibility improvements here probably um, yeah. to make sure this has some good semantics, but there is a button here to add something to the cart. Um, so pretty cool um, code to have it just handed to you in this starter. One other thing I would want to show you is the Gatsby-config file, which is sort of the command center for metadata in your Gatsby project. So things like your site name. Um, so we've got Zuri Jewelry here. It pulls in any plugins that you're using. So this is where the Gatsby source Dato CMS plugin is installed and where you hook it up to an API token. Um, let's see. So API tokens are for your private CMS. Um, if you're checking code into GitHub, you really don't want to push your API tokens to GitHub because then everyone can see them if it's a public repo. So we use what's called environment variables. Um, so this environment variable is something that I would put to run locally. I think I know what your next step would have been, Aisha, which is to create a new file. Um, and I'm gonna call this, it, it'll go in the root of this project. I'm gonna say dot env dot development. So this is, a, this is a dot file, which means it will be hidden from, you know, most users who don't have hidden files showing. And this is a place where I can add, and here's my computer telling me names that begin with a dot are reserved for the system. That, that is really what I wanted. Um, and if I go back to Gatsby config, there is this Dato API token. So I'm going to go Dato API token, put in equals, and then I'm assuming I need to go back to Dato and get yeah. that API token. So under settings. So you're actually going to go to settings at the top there, your top level navigation. Uh, yep. And now you should see API tokens. 
in the ah, middle there. Cool. So for any CMS, I mean, this is true if you're using, uh, you know, different integrations for Gatsby. Um, let's see, do I want the full access token or the read only API the token? Read only. Okay, so I'm gonna go copy that. Um, and again, this is like a test site, so I'm perfectly fine showing you the API key, but for your real platforms, you wanna keep those as secret. Uh, you don't wanna check them into GitHub, as I said. This env.development file um, is, I'm gonna save it, so it exists on my local computer, but there in Gatsby sites, there is this concept of a git ignore file. Um, and already this has an entry for .env star, and that will match on any file that starts with .env so that they will not get checked into GitHub. So we're already set up to not leak these API keys, um, but just to explain to you, that's why we, I haven't put that. I could make this work if I just pasted the API key here directly, um, put it in quotes, um, but that if I checked that code into GitHub, everyone would be able to see it. And then everyone would be able to connect to your CMS, which you probably don't want. But for this purpose, we're all good. So, yeah. all right. And so it is now, worth noting as well that uh, on Gatsby Cloud, this is already done for us. So automatically, mm. uh, Gatsby Cloud set that same API token uh, variable uh, so that uh, it would have access to our data CMS data when building our website. Cool, yeah, so for that, that's for the version that Gatsby Cloud is hosting. So it's like exactly. com computers in the cloud. So mm -hmm. this is for the local version that I wanna run on my computer so I can make changes and play around with it. So how would I make changes now? Are gonna, I just run Gatsby Develop here? Yep, you can right, run Gatsby so Develop. This is why I love VS Code because there's a terminal right here in the um, in the application. So I'm going to run Gatsby Develop and see what happens. So this should start up a development server. Um, it now has the API key, so it can talk to Dato CMS. And once I have this running, we'll be able to play around with the styling and see some changes in the browser locally. So I've got this localhost port eight thousand. It also gives me this local host port 8000 slash underscore underscore, is it three underscores? Three underscores. Three underscores and the GraphQL. And that is a really hand handy tool to see what data do you even have in your data layer um, for that GraphQL code that we talked about earlier. Um, but I'm gonna go straight to seeing this running. Yes, how awesome <laughs> is that? Like I've got this running on my computer now so I can make changes. I can push um, changes up to GitHub, like Aisha showed us earlier with the, we changed that currency. Um, so you can make styling changes as well. So maybe let's go look at some styling. And I guess the first thing I would do is figure out what I actually want to customize. So if I'm working in the browser, um, let's say we talked earlier about wanting to make some more semantic and accessible markup. So if I, I just did a right click and did inspect element, and this will pull up the Chrome developer tools that I can go in and look at what is, what kind of code am I looking at here? Um, so this is where that JSX markup comes in. Um, so each product image is a div and it's inside of a catalog item. And then the catalog wraps the entire thing. Um, so let's see, what, how should we change this markup so we can see a change happen um, quickly? Maybe for this entire collection, I could make it an unordered list, yeah. and then each item would be a list item. That makes there'll, sense. There will probably be some CSS styling I will have to do, but I'm going to go back to our index component and make that change so we can see something happen. So. Um, this div class name catalog, it wraps the, this repeating code. So the data products edges, um, it's going to map over an array of objects. So the thing that wraps it, um, I can get this to apply to everything inside of that repeater. So I had a div, I'm gonna change it to UL for unordered list. Um, and then inside of here, I'm gonna change each catalog item to a list item. I'm gonna hit save with my dust filled keyboard. And uh, that's pretty cool. So it hot reloaded in the browser. Uh, hot reloading is a fancy term for updating the web page uh, without a, a full refresh. 
So it hot reloaded this code. So now I have an unordered list and list items for each one of these. And it didn't really mess with the styles. So I'm guessing we have some CSS in here that is uh, a reset that's stripping out the little bullets for list items, um, which is great. So that was a pretty easy change. And now we have a, a little more accessible stuff here. I could keep going, you know, adding a, a header element and making sure we have headings. Um, but for keeping, in the interest of keeping things moving in our last few minutes, um, what do you think is the, the most important thing we should show at this point, Aisha? Yeah, um, if you want to take a look, we should talk about how Snipkart is actually connecting up to this website. How do yeah. you make a product in using yeah. Snipkart? Uh, so if you pop back over to that index page, uh, we yep. can take a look at that. Sure. So this part, this these list items now that are being repeated, that are being listed out, there's one for each product that we're getting from data CMS. Mm -hmm. And in in each of um, in each of those products, we are pulling different, we're pulling different information, right? So each is represented by that product. Uh, variable name. And so our product image sizes, all of that, our product name, product price, and so on. Uh, the thing that is going to mark this as a Snipkart product is uh, these data item attributes on the button. Ah, yeah, okay, all of these data attributes, cool. Mm -hmm. So if you're using the starter, this is uh, actually going to be on the entire div, it's gonna be on the entire wrapper element. Um, but since Marcy uh, has my, my finished product, more or less, uh, we are seeing this already on the button. So all of this is information that Snipkart needs to verify that this is indeed uh, a product that you want to add to uh, to your store. This is a product that could be purchased uh, by somebody on your site. Now, the important thing here is uh, that this uh, URL needs to match uh, your actual URL. And so for us, that's uh, gonna be, Localhost port 8000. So yeah, depending on, I mean, I'm working on this locally right now, so that's why I'm pointing it to localhost. Um, uh, so you can also just use a slash. Ah, mm -hmm. that sounds easier. <laughs> <laughs> so Especially, when you're testing, yeah. yeah, so when you're testing with uh, Snipkart, you can absolutely just use a slash. You can use like sample.com and that will work just fine. Uh, it is when you are actually going live and you want to uh, and you want to actually start charging customers. Uh, that's when you want to make sure that your uh, that your URL, your data item URL, matches your actual live URL um, because that is the page that Snipkart is going to crawl. It's going to uh, look at the the URL that you give it to verify that it is charging your customer the correct price. Uh, and so that's what's going to keep anybody from injecting any anything funky into uh, into the code and and potentially uh, charging themselves uh, nothing for your products. Mm, wanna, yeah, a bit of, we're, bit of security there. Yeah, we're we're foiling any uh, any wrongdoers trying to trying to get at our products. Got it. So something I saw in here is when I add this to the cart, um, the only indicator I had was number of items is incrementing up here. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, you could make a, a sort of user experience improvement to have it actually notify. I, and maybe I broke it by changing the markup. I'm not sure. But there is this my cart link up in the header. And so that will pop open this modal um, that you can decrement or increment. Like, I really like these socks. I, I think I want five of them. <laughs> <laughs> $70 worth of socks. I think this is a bit extravagant. Um, but yeah, so for the snip cart, um, yeah, what else do we need to know to get this to work? Yeah, that's, uh, so if you're using, if you're using the starter, that's pretty much it. You want to make sure uh, when you are ready to go live that that URL is correct. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to also make sure in your snip cart profile uh, or in your snip cart account uh, which we didn't, we actually didn't cover. You don't need it to test the website at all. Yeah. Um, 
you all you do need a, a credit card to uh, get live data or to get live uh, to get a live API key. Uh, but for testing, you can sign up to Snipcar for free. You can test infinitely. Uh, you don't need to have you don't need to have a credit card on file or anything like that. And right now, the way that their pricing works, you will pay two percent of the transactions uh, if your monthly revenue is over five hundred dollars. If it is less, uh, then you will pay ten dollars a month. Um, but that starts when you um, when you uh, get your live key. Nice. So yeah, I guess from here um, to to make this a reality, yeah. So you need a SNP card account. Um, I guess do they they match it by URL? Is that how you make the connection between your Gatsby site and SNP card? So you've also got uh, a SNP card. Uh, key in your code. So if you, yep, pop oh, over here. Here it is. And, and so it's just this, in there. I'm guessing you probably want to convert to an environment variable like we did. Yeah. So that <laughs> is, that seems uh, a I, think, risky. <laughs> I think that's probably the, um, like a public key or something. The, it's definitely a public key. And I think it belongs to the original author of this starter. Um, but yes. It's a public key, uh, and so that is only used to send um, information. So, we would, to, so yep. we would probably go and get an API token like we did for Dato, add it here in the env.development file, and then in your Gatsby config, go and change it to a process.env.snipcart API token. Uh, that would be the way I would handle it, um, just so that I'm not shipping anything that should should just not allow you know anyone on the internet to get access um for a test account you know demos this is we we have to see how they work so that makes sense but for your real thing you should consider environment variables yeah definitely super handy nice well i think we're about out of time so any parting words to uh, or any questions in the chat that we should discuss yeah I don't think I see any questions. I did want to take a second to thank our captioner, Cindy, today. Thanks for your help, Cindy. Always appreciate having a real human on our captions. Um, and let's try to see if we have any questions popping in. But I think we're good, unless you see anything. Nice. Well, we would love to hear from folks. Um, you know, if you test this out, if you have successes or you have challenges, get in touch with us. Uh, we are all on Twitter. We have um, the Gatsby JS Twitter, as well as a, a account that will get you directly to us on the learning team, which is Ask Gatsby JS, and we can tweet that out or um, share it. I know Aisha, you have a final um, slide if you want to pull that up or do up to you. I will stop sharing. <laughs> All right. Um, there is one question. How do you manage inventory? Um, that would all be done in Dato, correct? correct. So yes. you have you have product listings in Dato CMS. Um, those are content pieces that also work as inventory items. And so depending on the size of your inventory, I mean, we're talking about pretty small businesses. Um, but yeah, I think it's all done through data CMS in this example. We have one more question about payment processors um, that can support shipping or shopping from Serbia. Hmm. So international payment processing. And does Snipcart handle shipping? That's a good question. Haven't gotten that far. Um, do you know, Aisha, if they handle shipping? I guess I can go look at Snipcart's features. Oh, you're muted, Aisha. So you can specify taxes. Uh, I don't believe they do. They will handle shipping for you. Um, it says they do, actually. It's under do. their under their features. It might cost you a little bit extra. Um, it also says you can use their API to provide shipping logistics yourself. So I believe Sipcart does have that option. Sweet. I'm 
I'm more, I'm feeling more and more solid about moving over. Mm -hmm. And I think they do handle taxes. Um, if you go to um, snipcart.com slash pricing, they have everything listed there. Um, and it, yeah, I think they handle a lot of the hard stuff, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for hanging out. And thanks again to Cindy. Uh, I am really, I'm really excited. I will probably uh, do some more segments on this same workflow. Um, on my own site, actually moving things over from uh, from Shopify to Gatsby, Dato, Snipcart, uh, and that so you'll get to see kind of that migration of data as well. So uh, I am I'm actually I might I don't know if I'll do that on Gatsby, but we'll absolutely make uh, make that announcement if it happens. Cool. And we do have more streams coming, but we're still kind of finalizing some of the time on that. So if you aren't following the Gatsby Twitch channel already, now's a great time to do that. Um, and we'll see you all soon. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody. See, see you next time.